Mr. Executive, Mr. Serling is here. I should warn you, he is empty-handed. Oh, good. I haven't felt any pain in a while. Send him in. Mr. Executive, have I got a story for you. That's great, Rod. Why don't you sit down and tell me why you're empty-handed? Did you forget the script in your car? <laughs> I may be empty-handed, but I'm full-minded. Also, I don't drive. Well, what do you mean you don't drive? You crashed the car into the studio last month. No. No. My therapist said I'm not supposed to engage in your shenanigans. I'm supposed to keep it strictly business. I just want the script. You know, I've been thinking about what you said a few weeks ago. Uh, How I might not become a famous writer in the future because I'm altering the timeline. Yeah, Rod, listen. I don't know why I went along with you on any of that. You already are a famous writer. You have your own show for crying out loud. No, it's fine. I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I took care of it. Oh, good lord. What the hell does that even mean? It means I found a man who has agreed to immortalize me after my death as the world's greatest writer. Okay, I have several questions. And by all means, you can ask them. I really shouldn't. But first off, let's go with, uh, why is he doing this? Because I paid him. Plus, I agreed to help promote the business, and I have a few burial plots to sell. Oh, that seems like quite a bit of work selling land and all. It's nice to see you help a friend, I guess. Oh, no, I'm not helping him with the land. I bought the burial plots as a deal. See, I sell the other plots for a slightly raised price, and then my plot pays for itself. He gets a cut of my sales to help set everything up. But then, after that, I can buy more burial plots from him and make pure profit from the cut of the sales. So really, I'm my own boss. Oh, Rod. No. In fact, if you'd like, I can let you in on this deal and get you started with a discount price. No! I'm not supposed to engage in any of your shenanigans. No more questions. No matter how bad I want to know how he's going to pull this off. He's going to stuff my corpse full of wood, wool, and wire and prop it in front of a typewriter and put me in a display window. All right. That's enough. I'm taking an early lunch. Dolores! Wait. It even comes with a personalized funeral song. It's what the Greeks call an... Elegy. They irritate the irritated, flex perplexities, poise puzzles, magnify mysteries, impose inquiries, and coagulate quandaries. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This Season to the Twilight Zone, the only podcast to have no idea where it's going, but still land perfectly right where it's not welcome, making you ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I'm Time Commander, somewhere on the internet, sometimes. I'm joined by Huge. How you doing, baby? Sir, I do well. You do do. And you can find me all over the interwebs at Atomic Huge. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. We're also joined by J Delta Wagwan. Wagwan, Wagwan, and you can follow me at DJ Delta on Twitter, where oh. I just ruefully mourn the end of our existence that's coming. But, you know. Positivity and good vibes coming from that Twitter that's, feed. They don't call me positive J Delta for nothing. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we watched Elegy. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. That's that, not a word. Well, it is, but the one I wrote here is not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wrote allergy, <laughs> which is probably me, like, bastardizing allergy somehow. Yes, because you're allergic to how bad the show... Serling's writing is? Yeah. 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 I used to allergies. love this episode when I was a kid. This one? <laughs> I Because well, I think I just kind of remembered parts of it. And even when I watched it, I was like, oh, my God, this episode's ridiculously bad. And then I was like, oh, wait, I remember. I was like, oh, I, I still kind of like the end a little bit. I still I still kind of like it as a concept. Okay, the execution is horrific. All right. It's all right. I was a dumb kid, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm glad we're starting to literally get into that territory of why do people like it so much? And you're finally seeing like, oh, but I like it. But I'm watching it. It's not. Yeah. But I still feel like I like it, <laughs> but even I though I don't. <laughs> I remember liking it, so I still kind of like it a little bit. But I don't hate kid me, so I yeah. have to like it. Like, <laughs> no, no. 
We all hate kids. <laughs> <laughs> Especially my parents. <laughs> Uh, yes, so Elegy, which was the 20th episode of the first season of the 1959 television series The Twilight Zone, which first aired February 19th in 1960, wherein three astronauts touched down on an asteroid. <laughs> uh, yep, sure did. <laughs> Who had five minutes, folks? <laughs> so three astronauts touched down on an asteroid where they discover a world of people that appear to be frozen in time. Confused, they theorize as to why everyone is motionless until a man springs to life and explains. <laughs> Yo, why does Serling think everything that's not Earth is an asteroid? I don't know. I, I know I'm not like an English major, but there is no way the plot to a, to a story can be the first half of the story. Because <laughs> that is the first half of the story. It's like the old trailers back then where they would just read you the entire narrative back to the front. John McClane's wife gets trapped by terrorists. How does he kill them? With a window explosion and <laughs> also guns and you see for yourself. It's it, Maybe something will happen. Crazy. Yeah, but at the end, he, you know, he, he throws a bad guy off the he building. Off the and, building, yes. Yeah, it's and, fine. Uh, Carl Weathers is there. <laughs> Die hard. <laughs> Theater's next man. All right. <laughs> All right. That killed the whole show. Glad yep. we went with that one. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're telling the truth, we might as well just go on to the truth hour. Uh, <laughs> segment four, the truth hour. That's what it is. <laughs> which comes right after... Oh, there's no segment. There three. is no segment. <laughs> there is no hot debate. That's the truth. Oh. There okay. is no hot debate. Yo. Because we don't know what's a debate anymore. Yeah. Plus... One third of this podcast keeps hot debating whether or not hot debate is a word. <laughs> Am I that third? Yeah. Oh, shit. You keep talking about how that doesn't exist. What, hot debate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't exist on social media, that's for sure. <laughs> Wait, well, what does these days? Did we already debate if Die Hard was a Christmas movie? I think we... Did we? I don't know. I don't think... I think... You could easily have Bruce Christmas Willis shoes said no. being the song for it. Bruce Willis said uh, no. I heard Millis. Did you hear Millis? I, I heard, heard Millis. I heard Bruce Miller, but... <laughs> Bruce Miller, yeah. <laughs> Famed accordion player, Bruce Miller. I don't, I don't want to have to look that up. Don't lie about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know if your references are right or not. Come on, what are you doing to me? <laughs> don't make me Google. Yeah. You know I hate to Google. Oh, my God. All right. Come on, seriously. Can we go to the truth hour? Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's get serious <laughs> yeah. with the truth hour. Yeah. I'm sorry. My bad. Fuck me. Oh, excuse me. I didn't know you want to get serious with the <laughs> yeah. truth here for a second. Yeah. By all means. <laughs> oh, everybody quiet down. The truth's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's all calm down. Story, story time's over, folks. Hey, hey, Mr. Clown, why don't you put down your pie and pick up some truth? <laughs> <laughs> Throw that in my face. <laughs> go, go get Jason Biggs to fuck a truth pie. <laughs> He's free. Oh, he's free. Truth. Truth. Truth! Oh, now here come the consequences. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get me a truth infection now. Oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Oh. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. Remember when we used to sing? <laughs> no, I don't. On the 19th, February 19th. 1960. So February 13th, we're going to go back a little bit. February 13th, France became the world's fourth nuclear power after exploding an atomic bomb in the Algerian Sahara Desert near Regain. Fuck you, France. Well, I think it was more fuck you, Africa, because that's where they... <laughs> well, <laughs> France said yes. fuck you, Africa. Yes, exactly. We're saying fuck you, France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus... I mean, really, do you get to say, like, I became the fourth nuclear pet? Like, come on, you were you were an ally with the U.S. They just gave you the technology. <laughs> they were literally like, all right, mm, the Nazis were there for a while. I, look, you could have a bomb, too. But they paid for the bomb, right? Probably. Maybe. Well, I mean, they probably paid for it with money that we gave them. Like, the whole country got blown up. How does the economy work? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's a big circle. Dude. That's all That's all I know. The economy is a circle. It's just... Oh, please put that up in, in the episode somewhere. The economy is a circle. The economy is a circle. It is a circle. 
someone has money and then they give it to that person who and then they just pay it back to the guy who gave it to him. Sometimes the circle gets bigger and there's more people. <laughs> Sometimes the circle is a triangle. Yeah. Am I thinking of triangles? I'm thinking of triangles. No, a circle could have three points. Right? Cars drive on triangles, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Yugoslavian <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Bring down those people with you. <laughs> Comparative objects of negative quality. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the truth, folks. <laughs> February 18th, the, the 1960 Winter Olympics opened in California uh, by Richard Nixon, and it brought over 30 nations to the sport. Uh, 30 nations reminding you that there were 106 nations in the yeah. world at the time. So only 30 of them were allowed to have a winner. Yeah. And even then they handpicked those guys from those places too. So really this whole event was like 20 people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well actually no, cause it wouldn't cause they can't all win. Yeah. So it's even less than that. It's probably like eight and Nixon <laughs> yeah. and Nixon, right? Nixon. Nixon gave himself an award. Yeah. He took home the gold in uh, skeet shooting. Oh, I figured just like from the vaults of California. They just took the gold out of it and went, I'll start a war with this somewhere. <laughs> All right. So the 19th, the Chinese became the, uh, excuse me, they began taking its first steps towards the long march towards outer space when they launched a liquid propelled T7 rocket. So they're taking their first steps towards the space race. Yo, they got a long way to go. Yeah, spoiler alert. They don't put someone on the moon until 2003. Well, they still haven't put a person on the moon. Oh, well, they put something on the moon. Oh, well, you said it was a person, so I guess it was <laughs> they, a person. Well, whatever they can set up <laughs> people over a giant. They just didn't bring someone back. Was it them who like uh, earlier this year grew mint on the moon? Uh, no, they opened a mint. They're now minting their own <laughs> coins on the moon. Yeah, no, it, I think it was them. It wasn't the moon. I think it was a space station, and it died like the hour after they announced it. And they were like, "This is progress." Yeah, no, it, I mean it kind of is. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, <laughs> Yo, it's just embarrassing when you go, "We made mint." What? It's gone. Oh, <laughs> we, they were the first people to kill something on the moon. <laughs> oh, no. wait a minute, that should have been us. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, moon yeah. war, moon war. <laughs> Yeah, we we're making a space force, and they already killed something on the moon. We are way behind in this space race. How? how? Everyone knows in a moon forest there are stairways that go to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what else are the moon squatches gonna use to interdimensionally travel to an alternate moon? Think those are Buzz Lightyear's feet on the moon? No, <laughs> no, no. Too... the big feet. No, Buzz. Yeah. I say Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I meant Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the truth. First man on the moon was Buzz Lightyear. The first toy on the moon. That's why Tom Hanks played him in that movie. Yeah. I like... have spent most of my adult life being like, yo, Buzz Aldrin is underrated. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I fucking besmirched the legacy of that. Yo, fuck. I got to tell you, I think Buzz Aldrin <laughs> is my favorite Toy Story character. Oh, <laughs> uh. uh, yeah. So, uh,. To what? My birthday dot ninja. Let's go to them. Once again, I don't know how you feel about this. That's how they present it on the website. <laughs> I don't know how. I, <laughs> I don't know, guy. It, you're like, whoa, man. You can feel anything you want about this. I don't know. Happy? Horny? You pick it. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a male in your last earthly incarnation. Sweet. You were born somewhere around the territory of Mongolia That's in arousing. 1675. And your profession was dramatist, director, musician, or bard. Yo, you know what's wild? That back then, everybody who was born at a certain time period, regardless of <laughs> where on earth, yep. they were just all assigned the same profession. I yep. would fucking love to be a Mongolian bard. You kidding me? Yeah? Yeah! Go ahead. What What would Mongolian music sound like? From 1675. I mean, I don't want to get too into it, I but mean, we're not, I've prepared a like, little something. We're not going to put on a master's class here. Just give us a sample. You know? <clears throat> All right. It's well, electric first, guitar. It's a <laughs> electric guitar. Yeah. In 1675. Yeah. Really? No, yeah. not even guitar. Gu guitar. Guitar. Oh, wow. That's... All right. <laughs> Bold choice. <laughs> oh, it's still... Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, we're still doing you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do I have a lute? Of any kind? I oh. told you, you have an electric guitar. Oh, well, can you be the guitar and I'll do the... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so just give me the solo and I'll... Wow, wow, 
No, that's a dog. <laughs> Yo, I'm leaving. Goodbye. That's a dog. Yo, I, can't I was trying. I was trying to do gutter roll. I can't believe you got rid of all three of our Mongolian spouses in one day. <laughs> Mongolia Corp. I apologize. This is not. This is not our values. God damn. What's that? Just gain 19 Chinese sponges? Okay, it's fine. Never mind. Everything good. <laughs> Never mind. I'm okay with it. So also, brief psychological profile of your past life is you were a sane, practical person, a materialist with no spiritual spiritual consciousness. Your simple wisdom helped the weak and the poor. By being a dog that played the electric guitar. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's probably why you were a materialist. You had no spiritual consciousness. You said I was a human being. You said I was a Mongolian bar. Just that's true. You, dogs are sane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And a life, a life lesson that you brought from the past was you should develop self-love and the ability to implant hope into the hearts of people. Ambition is not everything. True wealth is buried in your soul. Yo, how do I get it out? Shovel? I... Soul shovel? What's a, yes. what's a show shovel cost these days? <laughs> but you need to get the money out to pay for the soul shovel, which is how it's just a big circle. Oh, that, that, that soul shovel scam. Yeah. I don't know. This is uh, <laughs> what? What is every bit we do? Fucking die! <laughs> Can't one of us do a bit that even ourselves agree with today? <laughs> oh god! All right, let's move on to the best hour. Our favorite hour. Our favorite hour. The Troy McClure hour. Hello, I'm Troy McClure. You'll remember me from such very arbitrary space adventures as a Big Red Stick, NASA's hidden attempt to harvest the moon's cheese, or Elon Musk presents Starman's Wild Ride, pedal to the metal to the moon. Today, we're here to talk about space travel, high speed, low ambition. All right, so first we have director Douglas Hayes. He both direct and wrote Things like the 1954 Adventures of Brinton Tin, the 1957 TV series Maverick, and the episode of The Twilight Zone, and When the Sky Was Opened. That's when the three astronauts yeah, like, disappear yeah. one by one. That uh, was, uh, so he specializes in astronauts and, I guess, dogs. Rin Tin Tin, right? That's what, yeah. Because there's Tin Tin, which is the little boy who has a dog, and then Rin Tin Tin is a dog. Is a dog, yeah. Oh, it's not the other way around? No, Rin Tin Tin's the dog. But then, doesn't the dog also have an owner whose name is, like, Rin or something like that? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's super confusing. Well, yeah, look, it's Rin and Tintin. And they just, like, solved mysteries and lighthouses and stuff like that. Like, I think you just really enjoy combining things you don't remember <laughs> to try and complete a memory. <laughs> it works for everybody else in America. I don't know why you call me out for it. Uh, we also have writer Richard Matheson, who's... Done so far three other episodes, including the one that Hayes directed. So, both the writer and the director worked on the same episode. So it's it, got to be a winner, right? And it's yeah, and, and it was about astronauts who go into space mm, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, all right, it must be great. Next, we have Cecil Kellaway, who plays Jeremy Wickwire. Didn't know he had a first name. Yep, I thought he was just Mister. <laughs> it's fine by me. You recognize him from the. 1946 The Postman Always Rings Twice, the 1948 Luck of the Irish, and the 1967 Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. He died in 1973. Next, we have Jeff Morrow, who plays Kurt Myers. You'll recognize him in the 1955 This Island Earth, mm -hmm. the 1956 Partners, which was a uh, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis film. So, yeah. Did they play Partners? Oh, boy. If they didn't. <laughs> yeah, yo. What a mistake they made. In my fanfic, they do. <laughs> And finally, the 1957, The Giant Claw. He died in 1993. Don Dobbins plays Peter Kirby. He was in the 1956 Tribute to a Bad Man, the 1958 From the Earth to the Moon, and the 1959 Men into Space. Men into Space. <laughs> I wonder what that's about. <laughs> I hope it's a Western. 50-50, it's, it's, it's it might be gay porn. In 59? Oh, I thought that said 69. 
died in 1991. I died. So right proud. After, yeah, right yeah. after that joke, I died. Kevin Hagen plays Captain James Weber. Uh, he is apparently famous for the 1958 <laughs> television show, show Yancey Derringer, which is about a fancy man with a gun who has a, a what, what? An Indian man to watch his back. <laughs> yes. He is played by a white man in he, red oh, face. Yeah, wow. Well, again, it's <laughs> what? The 50s. What's that? What race was that white man? Yep, German. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, it's okay though, because apparently I looked it up on IMDb and he got like a letter from the tribe of the Cherokee that was like, "Yeah, you're pretty good." Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not doing too bad. Completely whitewashing our history and all that. <laughs> like as far as whitewashing go, like you're, you're a pretty good one. Yeah. You're one of the I good mean, ones. Whitewashing is <laughs> you're one of the good ones. <laughs> Ooh, we didn't think that would have a backfire on him, did it? He's also famous for the 1960 Checkmate television series and the 1969 television series Land of the Giants. He died in 2005. You can see the full cast and crew at imdb.com. Uh, yeah, let's start that film. Get the opening narration. The time is the day after tomorrow. Stop. Fuck you. What? Yo. Sunday? I don't know. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the place, a far corner of the universe. Again, uh, just fucking learn how to tell a story. Why do you have to list the happenings of what's going on? Just... Her name, the X one. The X one, yeah. Which I don't know. I think, I don't know if you noticed it, but the name of this rocket was the XV2. Ooh. We're moving up in the world, yeah. Yeah, that V, and that's what that's what propels you into the space. <laughs> oh, far into space. X very two. <laughs> <laughs> so the time is the day after tomorrow. The place, a far corner of the universe. The cast of characters. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Three men lost among the stars. Three men sharing a common urgency of all lost men. They're looking for home. In a moment, they'll find home. Not a home that is a place to be seen, but a strange, unexplainable experience to be felt. Okay. Yo, according to Serling, all astronauts are incompetent. Like, as soon as you leave Earth, you're lost. Like, yeah. they never just get where they're going. Like, let's aim for that planet and we'll arrive there. No, they always... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how space travel worked back then, but Serling's understanding of space travel seems to be NASA has everything under control and literally just put the monkeys in the rocket. That's <laughs> literally all you do is you put the monkeys in the rocket and NASA takes care of everything else because that's what it seems to be about every time. Can we quickly, before we get into it, talk about the outfits of these astronauts? I love them. I, I for whatever reason, didn't notice it until later when they were rocking around town. Yeah. But yeah, it, they're great. <laughs> they're fantastic right they're and, fantastic and they're clearly sleeping bags that have been cut up and, and put around them right yo and then shiny boots and a, a girdle and a yeah, girdle 100 percent. i it's love. always different it's all because this is what like how many times are there astronauts here it's always different outfits and it's always weird yeah. yeah like last time they were football players i think or no that was a couple ago the the, the, the one there. where they're visiting the prisoner they were football they had the players. football helmets from like the 20s <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the leather like the leather yeah, helmets yeah, yeah. Now it's like Michelin Man with a girdle. Right, right. Uh, I fucking love it. It made sense to me where they say that the rocket lands and Pete, he hops into place and he's like, I think we're here. I think this is it. Oh, he's, yeah. He, I hope this is the place we said. And another astronaut, Carl, is like, well, we're almost out of fuel, so I hope so. And then one of them reads the instruments and says, oh, we're 655 miles away from Earth. Mm. No, no, not at all. I looked that up. Somewhere between Jupiter and Saturn, and Saturn or whatever. Yeah. So maybe one of Jupiter's moons. And I was like, oh, that's because the rings. They got the rings out there. So they had the rings on their jackets and their, <laughs> their spacesuits. They're like, wow, those are ring people. We need ring clothes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the ring people of Jupiter. 
Yeah, but it's not even right. But they came from Earth. <laughs> they even said I, we came from Earth. I, I, I want to well, get got, into that. We got to dress to we where got, we're going. If we're like, going to visit the ring people, we're not going to not dress like don't ring Don't you people. remember when we went to the Native American talks and we all dressed in Indian chiefs and headdresses? <laughs> I yeah. thought you were going somewhere different with that. Don't you remember last week we talked about this in the meeting in the clubhouse? We're all going to wear the same thing <laughs> and we're all going to wear these costumes that I made. It took me all no, day. He, we can't be astronauts if we wear different costumes. People won't know. <laughs> they, won't, they won't recognize us. They'll go, what's with these two astronauts and their butler? <laughs> astronauts don't wear tuxedos. Oh, the space taxis here. <laughs> because we look like this, they're going to ask questions and they're going to say, wow, those people really know that they really know what's going on right now. But not if we're wearing different uniforms. God. They're going to be asking that the whole time. Damn you know, it, Derek. What we say they said, where'd you come from? We said, we came 655 miles away from Earth. They go, wait a minute, what's with those rings? And then they're going to be confused because you have the rings and I don't and he died and nobody will know. <laughs> also, I want to get into later the whole they're from Earth thing because I, I don't know if these guys are, are from Earth. They're, I, I don't think no anyone here knows. Well, they're from future Earth. Yeah, future uh, Earth. Even that seems debatable. We'll get to it. Though. All right, yeah, whatever. So um, they land. They're like, we're, yeah, we're 655 miles away. From Earth, who knows what's out there? We're not at the right where we're supposed to be, so let's we're cross our fingers. We're gonna open the door, and oh, it looks exactly like Earth. Where are we again? Six hundred and fifty-five miles away. What? Did you enjoy blackout. the blackout? Oh yeah, blackout. Blackout. Did you enjoy the landing? Where they're like, oh, we're about to land. Let's get on this like bus bench <laughs> and and, and hold, hold on, hold hands. Yeah, they just sat down and at like maybe a twelve degree angle. Like, yeah, it's yeah, on a 12 degree yeah. incline for yeah. five seconds. We're like, we're here. And but got up. I, I love that this is still the point where it's like, yo, we just didn't believe in airlocks or no, any nothing. of that no. shit. No, oh, you yeah. just opened the door. They, I, it, they reveal this later about how their, all their equipment was destroyed somehow. And my first thought was like, well, shouldn't that stuff be on the inside of the rocket? Why do you have all the important stuff on the outside? Like, like all our satellites and our tracking equipment was trashed. And I was like, well, that's. I feel like that would be one of the first things you'd take care of when making a rocket. Let's see, I'm building a car. Where do I put the engine? On the roof! <laughs> what? No, no. Put it underneath so it, like, drags along the ground. It gets a little oh, extra now, kick. Now you're thinking. All right, so, uh, right, blackout, which means it's time to go to one of our sponsors. Today, one of our sponsors is Happy, Happy Glade Butlers. Happy Glade Butlers, lifelike robotic butlers for when yelling at an inanimate object just doesn't carry the same emotional weight. Get a robot that can frown with Happy Glade Butlers. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Happy Glades for sponsoring us. <laughs> Make sure you use our promo code WWYMT. Yes. Yeah. All right, we come back and we go to a farm. The two astronauts think they're back on Earth and... One of them whistles to a very clearly taxidermy dog. He goes, come here, boy, come here. It doesn't move. It hasn't moved the entire time they've been there. I know I was supposed to think like, oh, this dog's not moving. There's something strange about this. But honestly, at first I was like, oh, yeah, there's no budget for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I already saw, like, the rocket ship land, and I was like, oh, yeah, that, this is... No joke, when, like, when they shot the uh, the actors, like, when they were supposed to be frozen and stuff like that, Yo. I was so surprised that they didn't just use one of their shitty still shots that they do, like, the frozen motion. Um, they, 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 they do, do for, for a the reaction one. shot. But just for the one. Yeah. Just for the I'm surprised because you see them, all the extras blinking. I'm yeah. surprised they didn't try to use it ever again. Never once. So I have something. I didn't want to get to it just yet, but we could do whatever you want. Every single scene. Yeah. There is one of those people yeah. is moving. Yeah. Noticeably. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I have the entire list. Every single person. I, I mean, you didn't have to do that because I can tell you the list is every scene. Every yeah, <laughs> all of every them. scene. Yeah. They're all every they single blink one. or they move, they sway or they whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's like the fisherman, the band, the mayor, the guy by the clock, uh or jealous violinist I have, every single person <laughs> has yeah. it. We'll get to that when it happens. But what was that guy's deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's very upset. All right, after pointing to a tractor, which was used in the early 20th century before the Great War. The Total War. The so, yeah. Total. Oh, was it Total? I thought it was just great. Was it the, the Great and Total? I was like, 
Totally great. Oh, yeah. the totally great <laughs> war. That's where people just like shout at onomatopoeias at each other. Radical. <laughs> 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 I've never heard the onomatopoeia radical. I've never heard that one. <laughs> what uh Wow, that's a good... It would just explode like like bam and stuff like that. <laughs> the bombs would go is. off and go bodacious. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I didn't know you were you were a total great war story. <laughs> yeah. That old Batman from the sixties with Adam West where everyone just said tubular every time it would come <laughs> yep, up. Yep, yep. <laughs> from your mouth to my ears. <laughs> All right, so Pete suggests that they're on Earth 200 years ago. Most logical. Of explanation. course. Yeah. Of course. The uh, the voice of reason in this episode, who is uh, the professor, what's his name again? Kirby, right? Was he a professor? Or, or Myers. He... They call him professor. They called yeah. him that once, and I was like, oh, maybe he's being sarcastic. I, couldn't I, tell I, though. I, I, could, yeah. I had no idea. Like, I thought he was too, and then yeah. he answered him sincerely, and I was yeah. like, oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not. this. <laughs> Yeah, so Myers was his name. Yeah, Myers and he's like, well, you know what? That's just as possible as anything else <laughs> in the world, except for those two sons over there. Un- until the two sons moment, yeah. I was so hopeful for this episode. I was like, oh, what? Like, what an interesting premise that, like, by space travel, like, I don't know, yeah. time, relativity, they're now moving mm-hmm. at such a fast speed that everything, like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Well, well, when they said it later, it blew my mind because I was like, because I, I remembered it. And then as it was going, I was like, oh, I don't really remember how this ends. And it's like, well, maybe we're going so fast and you can't say, I was like, they're doing time dilation. Rod yes. Serling is doing time yeah. dilation. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing time dilation. Uh, yeah, that was totally on you guys for putting that much faith in this man. Yeah, that he is would, very That true. is insane yeah. for you to put that on him. I know. But, okay, the fucking two sons, it's how he says it. He was like, to my knowledge, the Earth never had two sons. He's like, that's not something someone who's from Earth <laughs> says. Yeah. Because, I, I, like, what's 218, 18, what year is it? Like, 18, like, 19. 2185 or something like that. Yeah. No, I, I mean, like, 200 years before now yeah. in, our, in our current. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, but, I, I yeah. wouldn't be like, to my knowledge, there wasn't two Earths back in 1819. Right. No. But, but show me photo proof that there wasn't. <laughs> huh? Well, Bet you never thought of that. When was the camera invented? Oh, have you ever seen that meme where it's like, this is the first time anyone ever took a photograph? It's like, well, then who's taking a photograph of that guy? It was like it was like the, the world's first camera. It's like, then who's taking a picture of that oh. camera? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I'll just go back into my room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, Earth doesn't have two sons as far as I know, Yo. says the professor. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Maybe he's not a professor. Then, I guess. <laughs> uh, so the final astronaut, Weber, notices a man. And he tries to get his attention, but the farmer stares off into the distance with a smile, not moving. Well. The three astronauts, well, he kind of sways <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. When I say not moving, I it's mean the wind. within the limitations of the, the extras. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the three astronauts run off completely creeped out. <laughs> we get to a bridge. The three men see another man, and Pete runs over to talk to him. And it's uh, so, so like a basically it's the same farmer we just saw, but in a fisherman <laughs> now outfit. He's a fisherman. And now he's fishing, yeah, like a hundred percent. And Pete kind of touches him, and he immediately falls over. And then they hear music, so they run towards the music. But wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what? We're already what? we're already glossing what? over <laughs> so much fucking batshit crazy stuff so they see the farmer just like frozen yeah right yeah so they all go oh, i gotta get out of here <laughs> and they fucking bolt then immediately it cuts to them on a bridge and they're walking so it's like okay maybe this is some time later <laughs> yeah, they yeah, ran yeah. for a bit they're completely fine they're just like kind of strolling right they're on this bridge hey there's a guy I count it because I watched this episode twice because yeah. I wanted to get the people swaying. So uh, I watched the second time I, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to write everything down. Sure. So the second time I watched it, he ran for 1.5 seconds, jumped down, went down, and then did this. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> hey, and. Anything good, Biden? I was like, why are you out of breath? Well, you Yo. know, we only send our physically fit into space. <laughs> like, only the best of the best. I don't think you understand what all that low gravity does to the lungs. <laughs> Plus, you're getting past the. I know you saw it. I know you saw. It. We have what? to. We have to talk about it. The Horrible best part. Frame. The it was a picture. It was a photograph. Yeah. yeah. 
It was a photograph well, of the two again, of them. I was again, dying. Yeah, the free. Yeah, no, not even not a photograph. A freeze frame of action film. They just stole a frame out of the film and went. <laughs> We're gonna use that. Yeah, yeah. Because if they if they posed for a photo, it wouldn't have been so blurry, and you could tell it actually was them. <laughs> <sighs> we didn't get a reaction shot. Uh, just <laughs> get, take one frame of them awkwardly pose and use that. All right. So they run towards the town. And when they get there, they see a town frozen in celebration of their new mayor. Music is being played on a loudspeaker. And they begin to question if all of this is just an illusion. Or I think I think the actor actually misspeaks here because he says it's either it's an illusion or it's a place 200 years ahead of our time. Which, oh, no, it would yeah, be 200 years ahead. behind yeah. our time. Yeah. yeah. So he must have misspoke there. Uh, or time is frozen for the people. Or maybe it's sped up for us. Yes, time dilation. And we're moving faster than they're moving and stuff like that. And it's just... I don't understand how they think that if they just heard music. <laughs> what, it wasn't hummingbird music? Like, what? Hummingbird <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it going so fast? I mean, imagine if a hummingbird played the drums, dude. Or like, <laughs> strum a guitar. <laughs> like, it goes so fast. <laughs> Cuts to J.K. Simmons. Faster! Oh, no one saw that movie? Oh, that movie's so fucking good. No. Spider-Man? No. What is it? Hamlet 2? Yeah, Electric Boogaloo, yes. Yes. There is a Hamlet 2. I'm aware of that. <laughs> and it is called Electric Boogaloo. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's, not. No, it's, not. Yeah. it's called Side of Ham. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All right. Um, so, yeah, they're arguing about what could have happened, and then they go, oh, it's uh, just the same as the hands on those clocks. What the? There's no hands on that clock. Oh, no. Or fuck you. Whatever no. Whatever they say. Whatever no. Yeah, no. Go ahead. go ahead. You're glossing over the most iconic line in this episode. All right. But that clock has no hands. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yes. I put that over. I did the 30-second back on Netflix five fucking times. This but this clock has no hands. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Oh. All right, cool. That'll be one of the clips I use to put in my new like song later. But this clock has no hands, 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 hands. But you got to do it at hummingbird speed. Yep, you know it. Hummingbird rock. All right, so they decide that they're going to split up and reconvene in an hour. Yo, never split up. Yeah, I know. Is this the first? Of that in all of, I guess, uh... History? Probably TV. not. <laughs> I, I... These are the first dumb people in history? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. When did Scooby-Doo start? 18 what? <laughs> how old is that show? God damn. Uh, wait, how old is Don Knotts? Because <laughs> that's how we determine how old Scooby-Doo is, right? Because he was always uh, on that shit. I think he was in the Civil War, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I feel like there's a movie where he fought Indians. I don't know why. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's a historic, <laughs> a historical film. <laughs> like, uh, also, the Civil War wasn't fought against Indians, <laughs> so my reference point is null and void to begin with. But, all right, so they split up and go start searching. Weber looks in what seems to be an unnamed hotel, uh, and a card game is being played, where one man has the high stack and a winning hand. Uh I could be wrong, but I'm almost 110% positive that the money had the president, Theodore Roosevelt, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. I was yeah. trying to see. Uh, I was like, okay, that chick is with the holding up the bottles. She's swaying, her arms moving. <laughs> These poker players there. But, but you know who wasn't? They do a close up on the squinty eyed guy who's like, hmm, and he's got, he's showing his yeah. hand. And, uh, that dude wasn't. He was just. He was fine. So so props to Squinty Eye guy. You've been he, dead for like forty years, I'm sure. But he you, was just you were good. <laughs> yeah. Like, Meanwhile, the one dude who's. It was just a close up of his hands. He didn't have to move anything. He's like he's shaking like crazy. Like he's Michael J. Fox. Don't put that in. Don't put that in. <laughs> well, now you have to. <laughs> you were the one. Yo. Who did that? <laughs> yeah, we could have cut that. Look, I will say every time. Uh, before before a show, like when the doctor checks me, now they've been putting this thing on my hand. Yo, I am a hundred percent convinced. <laughs> Ooh, something's brewing in me, cause that motherfucker is like, all right, let me just put this thing on your hand, and like my hand is just radically. And I'm like, yo, he's gonna he's gonna tell watch me I am your, not cleared to wrestle. I think that's why. Watch your ring finger on uh on your right hand, and if it ever uh like you just if you hold it up like this, and after a bit like. 
it starts kind of twitching even a little bit, then uh, you're like gonna he's doing literally yeah right now yeah you're gonna get it oh yeah get what uh, Parkinson's oh boy yeah oh boy, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, look you know some of us uh... no I was gonna say though maybe it's not just you because I went to the doctor that day pretty late so maybe after <laughs> after all the other people did it. When I got to it, because when she put the thing on my finger, she was like, you can, uh, you can put your hand down if you want. You don't have to hold it out. So, <laughs> maybe after all the other people were like, ah! <laughs> fucking falling off the chair because they're handshaking so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. I found out I'm getting Parkinson's. <laughs> it's a big day for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, your, uh, your hand shakes a lot. You want to fix that? No, 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 no. It, it helps other places. Yeah. <laughs> His wrist ain't shaking, it's just the hand. It's just the hand, yeah. You gotta keep a stiff wrist. (laughs) Dope. But then you get tennis elbow. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so Carl looks in a different hotel named the Royal Crest. He finds a romantic evening in a room where people are playing violins, except one of the four violinists is frowning. (laughs) Like, they lit, legit, they gave a sting. Like, that's supposed (laughs) to be something like, oh my god, what?! He's behind it. Oh, he hates his job. He must kill people and stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, back then you couldn't hate your job. You weren't allowed to. That's why this is so weird. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this whole seriously, this whole episode is just like, what is that thing? Oh my god, it could be anything. No, it's not in mind anyway. The whole episode is that. It's it's them like, what is this? It could. It's. Anyway, over here, we're going to go to a different thing every single time. And I just hate it. I fucking hate it. I feel like you guys should hate it, too. I don't know. I I thought you guys were going to jump on that. I fucking hate that shit. It's the whole... We're we're immune by this point. It's just like other episodes. He's done it once, maybe twice in the episode. This episode, yo, it is legit. Every scene is... Never mind. You've seen nothing yet, dude. I already yet. hate it. I already hate it. it like it, it's as late. Like well, these people are also <laughs> staying still, just over and over again. It's dude, like uh... with, without the music, I wouldn't even know he was trying to be dramatic. <laughs> like, so Pete, the last astronaut, he finds a rather unattractive woman being named Beauty Queen of the Century. I thought that's what they were trying to go for there with, like, the mole on the face oh, and the giant glasses okay, yeah. and the whole thing. And she was larger than the other women and and shorter. I thought that, that was... Because she, she no. was absolutely the opposite of all the other women. So yes. that's what I thought they were trying to go for there. Well, I'll say this. But out of all the people on that stage, she was the only one that wasn't swaying like crazy. What? <laughs> like now everyone that's else. A, that's a marriable woman. <laughs> <laughs> So how fucking long were these takes? Yeah. Right? People are like I could get it. It was like if imagine they did this in like the fucking like the desert ones they had in like fucking California right. where I was like, okay, I get it. Like it's a hundred degrees <laughs> and you've been going at like yeah. you're fucking like I, I just I gotta pass out. This they're just fucking chill. There are people who are sitting down when when those fucking girls are on the stage. Yeah. They're sitting down. They're just like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the old chair is shaking. <laughs> 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 I, there's no reason to. <laughs> they like literally every extra in this movie or whatever episode could have leaned on anything next to them. Yeah, but they're all like standing next to railings or like they're sitting down. There's no reason for them to like you said. The guy's holding the fishing pole. You don't have to hold the fishing pole. Put the bowl, the pole on the ground, and then yeah. put your hands on the pole. Like there's all these weird decisions and acting where it's like you're you're definitely making it worse for your extras. <laughs> You're definitely making it worse. Let me hold up this hand of cards as far from my body as possible. <laughs> Are those real cards? No, 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 no. Use the lead ones. <laughs> <laughs> I can see every time. So uh, Pete goes up to the uh, beauty queen. He's like, listen, I don't get me wrong. You're the most beautiful one here. But what the hell is wrong with everybody? Why won't they answer me? Ah! And then he runs away. And then... One old man turns and smiles. <laughs> now, I want to know, because this is the first time you ever saw this episode, I assume. Yeah. Did you think he was death or anything like that based on your Twilight Zone history of some of these well, episodes? Uh, first off, based on my Twilight Zone history, no, he was not death because they did not do the death sting. That's true. <laughs> death sting every time. 
Uh, I 100% thought he was a magical imp of some sort <laughs> that, based on the music they played. I, I didn't remember this episode either. I was like, oh, he's like, it's it's a magical imp. They've crossed <laughs> into some kind of like magical yeah. realm where this guy is like, uh, what's the green guy from Flintstones? Uh, Mr. Mixelpix? No, no that's, that's from that's Superman. Superman. Uh, the Great Kazoo. Great Kazoo. Great Kazoo. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, they landed on the Great Kazoo's planet. And- yeah. Like, he's just fucking with him. A hundred percent. Like, I, part of me expected him to be like, oh, how you doing there, boys? Like, <laughs> like he's a leprechaun or something. Like, I mean. <laughs> and he puts his police hat on. <laughs> and he clubs them. To death. Oh, think of me landing on my planet, do you? Oh, <laughs> whack, whack. What are you doing there? Get back in the paddy wagon, would you? Lloyd, turn around my neighborhood. <laughs> toity, toity, toity. You got yourself a rocket <laughs> landing license, do you? Oh, you don't, huh? Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he turns and he smiles. Ha, 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 I'm a playful imp. Or whatever it is they're trying to go Yo, for. Yo, 100% <laughs> would have been more satisfying. 100%. If it ain't gonna be time dilation, give me a playful imp. <laughs> give me a playful imp any day. Any day yeah. <laughs> and twice on Serling's day. <laughs> yeah. And make sure he's got a staircase in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, blackout. Which means it's time for another sponsor. Today we have Liebfrau's Milk. Do you want to kill a man, but not let him know it? Just tell him it's imported wine. Liebfrau's Milk, found in all basement level cigarette machines of your local Macy's department store. (laughs) Alright, again, thank you for sponsoring us, Liebfrau's Milk. So we come back and we have the men are walking around a neighborhood with dramatic music building to nothing. <laughs> like it literally, it builds to him hitting a bell. <laughs> bing, bing. And then they go, all right, what's over there now? And they walk away from that. <laughs> They've been on a rocket for who knows how long. Out of supplies. And they're just not like... Let me eat ice cream. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not hungry. Oh, yeah, they're just like, oh, let me be freaked out. Let me push people over. Let me do something instead of just walk around confused. Right. What do you want them to do? Go into some sort of a fucking deli and go, there's a customer here. Customer. <laughs> customer here. 45 cents. I was like, well, that was like the first episode, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep going with it. Oh, my God. Till the wheels fall. Till the wheels. You mean the triangles. <laughs> Uh, so they approach one house and ask the old man on the porch if they can look around. Surprisingly, he answers and invites them inside. Yo, just... Ah! Bah, bah, <laughs> yeah. Punch that old man in the face! Dead! <laughs> uh, the old man casually mentions, Oh, you know, come on in. This house was built for a man uh, who was coming here. But then at the last second, he decided he wanted to be at night. So we put him over in the night section. And they're like, What are you talking There's other sections? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh... There's, like, the Greeks and the, the Wild West, and, uh, well, that's all a history. <laughs> that's it. The whole thing. Oh, except for, of course, the most popular time in history, the 1950s Americana. Wouldn't it have been more interesting if, like, they ended up wandering from one time to another, or... Well, they did. They went from farm time. Hmm. To mayor time. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> to 1950s time. I'll fucking run you down with my car right now. <laughs> That's okay. You got good insurance. I'll, I'll be set for life. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. 1950s Americana, the most popular time because it represented the last best time on Earth before peace was completely impossible. Yo. Yo, yeah, post World War II, when peace was at its greatest so chance. Suck the life out of me. Fuck <laughs> you, motherfuckers. Remember that hiding under desks wasn't that peaceful? <laughs> Yo, remember back then when some black people had some land? You're like, yeah, we'll just set it on fire and take it. Uh, Yo, that was good times, son. So peaceful. Woo! What did I say? Blacks? I, I meant every non-white. Sorry. So. Weber explains, they are from Earth, they're on a routine geological mission, a meteor storm hit, some equipment got destroyed, they were lost for six months. Shut up! Six months. Whatever, and this is the first landable object they've seen. Okay, first landable object. Yeah, sure, (laughs) sure, right, yeah. Uh, The old man is very confused, thinking they were from the Glades. He asks if Earth ever had that atomic war. Oh, yeah, they had it in 1985. 
And then they're like, well, anyway, tell us where we are right now. Tell us where we are. And Mr. Wickwire is like, you're in a cemetery. I'm going to go get you guys food. See ya. <laughs> Why Serling with the names? Why Wickwire? You know what's even worse, in my opinion, is uh, he changed that name. Like in the original story, the guy had a name and he was like, I'll change it to Wickwire. I'm great. <laughs> yeah, I'm a genius. I'm the smartest man on every planet. He, he had to struggle. So like, you know, he had like McGuire and he's like, wait, almost. <laughs> Wick, my no, <laughs> yeah, and like two Cad days. Cad No, <laughs> damn it! I've already used that one. Let me check the papers. Uh, one name, that's not it. Second name, oh yes, that's it. Well, that's the whole list anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a general store ad. Yeah. Candle wicks. Hmm, something there maybe. <laughs> Copper wires. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I smell an Emmy. Candle copper. No, no. <laughs> no? Let me keep looking. Let me keep looking. Yo. <laughs> and, and then like three days later, what? wait a minute. What? what? Three days ago, I had an idea. Wait a minute. <laughs> you joke. We're watching three more episodes when we miss, meet Mr. Candle Copperton. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to hurt. And Mr. Candle Copperton has a secret. <laughs> you know you know, it would be even better than that happening? Is that actually happening and you're not realizing it's a real fucking name? <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so great! <laughs> Just to watch you go, ah! I correctly predicted his crap! Alright, so... He's gonna go get the food. We fade back to Wickwire bringing them coffee, saying... Or bringing them drinks, like alcoholic beverages, saying, don't worry, coffee will soon follow. Let's toast to eternal peace. Even though... In that previous statement, I just told everyone peace is impossible. <laughs> We're going to drink to that thing that's impossible. Wickwire asks if, there, if there's anything more they want. Like, just anything in the world. What's the one thing you guys want? And I think Pete, he casually, like, his, his 100%, in my opinion, was a definitive casual response. He's like, yo, I'd like to be on my spaceship headed home. <laughs> like, yo, I'd like to get the fuck out of here. And he's like, ah, ha! Okay, you said it. You said it. And I'm like, yo, that's not how this works. I see exactly where you're going with this, and that's not how this works, sir. Like, uh, he's also, and then he's like, but wait, but what? What year did you guys come from? What year did you come from? They're like 2185, and he's like, oh, duh, this whole thing makes sense to me now. This is what Wickwire says. I thought you were from Happy Glades, which is the world's greatest mortuary. Uh, and then he explains that management devised a scheme to recreate the conditions that the recently deceased could live their life's fantasy in the afterlife. Nonsense. Yeah. Total nonsense. Great scam. Yeah. <laughs> great scam. But not a great scam. Because he follows through with it. Because you follow through <laughs> with it. Stupid. But, and here's the, the, the worst part about yeah. it being a bad scam is... Like, who's going to do that? Like, who's going to go put my corpse, go pose my corpse on another planet yeah. for a cemetery? Who the fuck's going to visit? Like, well, what? well, you can't because the guy will immediately kill you. If you yeah, know, exactly. Right. The story, yeah. Yeah. All the extras are just people who are like, oh, I'm here to visit grandpa. Visit grandpa. That's your wish, yeah. huh? Well, just drink this. Would this have been... More on the nose. Would this have been more ridiculous if Serling had renamed Wickwire to uh, Wish Granterson? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be Grant Wisherson. Grant Wisherson. Grant Wisherson. Whoa, Grant Yo, Wisherson. You, Hold on. you just made a good bad Serling name. <laughs> Yo! Right? That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Tell us your completely plausible uh, Rod Serling character names <laughs> in the comments. Yes. Which are now available at why would you make this doc or www.ymt.com yeah that's right they are we have a comment section mm -hmm. hopefully if, if it worked right so yeah, you can no, go, you should try you can actually go to one website on the internet and yell at us <laughs> how fucking offensive and stupid we are uh, take that down don't i don't want that anymore. yeah I, I regret telling you to do that i think i have to manually approve the comments oh that's... oh really what yeah you, sh you should just let them throw up just let it yeah we'll take down the racist stuff out <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Except for the stuff against whites, because we'll be like, that's true. Because <laughs> that's how society works. So, uh, right. The, the men absolutely refuse to believe the story of the cemetery scam, because it's obviously a scam. Yeah. And they're at least that smart. Uh, they Yeah, they don't believe it. Why not do this on Earth? You know, it, it's so much easier that way. 
Wick Wire's like, oh, because Happy Glades promised peace and Earth doesn't have that sort of thing there, you know, yeah. with the whole war we just talked about. Uh, it began in 1973. Also, I'm a robot. I shut off when you're gone and I turn on when I'm needed. He doesn't use the word robot, but that's basically yeah. what the story is. Uh, he's been off for something like 200 years now. I don't know why, but when he says that, then they all get angry. They're like, <laughs> no, I'm, wow, no. <laughs> Never mind that they thought they traveled 200 years in the past earlier. They're like, well, that could happen. He's like, no, I lived 200 years. I'm like, no, yeah, that's not how time travel works. <laughs> Only nonlinear 200 years. Oh, yeah. Also, by the way, you've been poisoned by the eternifying fluid. Yeah. Yo, I rewound three times. I was like, what French word is he saying? What is he? Oh, eternifying. Go fuck yourself, dude. Really? You're going to stay here forever. Why? Why would I do this to you? Because you are men and you are here. Excuse me. Because you are here and you are men. And while there are men, there can be no peace. Okay, so... A, that line is probably like one of the most memorable lines in, in science fiction, and I see it everywhere. Because of how bad it is? <laughs> everywhere I see that line. Uh, B, stay woke. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, d does it see, like, it's supposed to be like the robot, Wickwire, yeah. is like, oh, I mean, kind of my bad, but also like, you're a human, so fuck you anyway, right? I Did he guess. feel guilt? It kind of seemed like he was like, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's... that I interpreted it as like, he was like, ooh. Yeah. <sighs> eh. <laughs> uh, among other places, this is yet another place where it starts to get complicated, where Serling very clearly alters from the short story, and because he does that, it compromises the character's motives and intentions, mm. and you're just like, I don't know what you're going for now, dude, because <laughs> you took a thing that worked, put it in a blender and went, but it worked eight seconds ago before I chopped it up. Yeah. So it should still taste like steak or whatever the analogy is I was making. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, Yeah, there can be no peace. Uh, fade out, fade in to the spaceship where Wickwire dusts the now frozen men who are on their ship as some straight up fucking As Abbott and Costello music plays. He's mop, he's mopping them, but he's dusting them down. And it's just like, bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Yo, I was watching some Abbott and Costello bits. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit is that some of that stuff is even better than some of the stuff I, I yeah. like from today. Holy fuck. It's really good. It's time. They got a good timing, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. Really yeah. good timing. Oh, it's, it's fucking really good. really fucking good timing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're all in there. We got the closing narration. Kirby Weber Myers. Three lost men. They shared a common wish. A simple one, really. They wanted to be aboard their ship, headed for home. And fate, a laughing fate, a practical jokester with a smile that stretched across the stars, Ugh. saw to it that they got their wish. With just one reservation. That wish came true, but only in the Twilight Zone. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not okay with this at all. Yeah. He really... The problem with it is, this is, th it's just like literal translation, I guess, if you really want to get down to it. But the real, the, the problem is, sci-fi sometimes, and horror, they take the idea of be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for is a very easy to understand thing. So if there's two sides to every coin. I want to be a leader. Okay, fine. If you want the respect and admiration of a leader, you're going to have to deal with the stress and, you know, whatever else that comes with being a leader. I'm not a leader. I don't fucking know. <laughs> you want to be the leader yeah. of a country oh but now you're Hitler oh yeah no yeah. You, you gotta put in the work in order to be respected that way otherwise you're just you're stealing time and energy and blah 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 but certainly is like oh you want to be a leader huh well you get to be head slave on this slave trade now you're leading the slave trade whoop de doo I tricked you mm. and you're like dude that's not even close what are yeah. you talking about <laughs> Did you learn your lesson? Did you learn your lesson? Hey, Serling, I'm hungry. Oh, you're hungry? Have fun cooking food for all eternity. That's not even close yeah. to what I asked for, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're stranded somewhere and you want to go home? Well, be careful what you wish for. That's like right. Now you're what? in your ship forever. Where's the ship going? Oh, nowhere. Literally nowhere. Not the wish. You Not the wish I even tried to trick you in wanting to. Yeah. It's it not, is it's... weird because there are episodes where he's clearly he's like, he has like, 
the moral high ground, and yeah. he's and he, but and he's shoving it down your throat. And he's like, "Listen, you people are ridiculous about right. this. If you keep going down this path, then we're all going to be dead." And it's like, "Yo, I totally get that." Then there's other ones, just like you're talking about, yeah. where it's just like, "Oh, so you want this, huh? <laughs> well, how about this? How about how about them apples?" It's just like, okay, that right, dude. This honestly, this this was so bad. I was like, "No, it's got to be me. Like, it's it's got to be me." It's got to be like some sn- Sterling must be a master of like intrigue and and like oh I know what it was because what happened was right in the episode when when uh, Wickwire brings him the drink mm. they all take a drink and Carl he's like mm, oh what is that that must be uh that must be lip uh, what is it Liebfrau milk he's like yes which I look it up it's a real low quality German wine so I was like oh shit why would that guy know about that. Maybe Serling knows about Operation Paperclip. <laughs> and Professor was the guy who was like, oh, that's some good high quality German wine. And Serling was like, oh, yeah, you think you're going to come over here and like be <laughs> respected when you were a Nazi? No, you die in the Twilight Zone, son. <laughs> no. No. And you no. want to know why no? Why? Because um, the guy who directs the next episode, yeah. uh, John Bram, was he fought for the Germans in World War One? We'll get there. We'll get there. Has that connected my thing? <laughs> well, because you said that uh, he wanted to. He's like, "Oh, fuck you," because you were fucking. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. But that's he said World War One. That's a different World War. Oh, that's, yeah. different. that's totally. That's totally different. different. Yeah, yeah. That's totally they weren't different. Nazis yet. He he he. Selling really hated Franz Ferdinand. Louis Titania, more like Louisa Schmania. Sh- <laughs> Louisa blah blah. <laughs> he didn't even respect it enough to give it a good pun. <laughs> All right, so uh, Hollywood thinking cap, how would you make it better? Blah blah blah. No, nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't. Who cares? Right? Are we at that point? Uh, <laughs> but this clock. No hands. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you had done something with time dilation. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking like more that, along the, like, well, the same thing, time dilation is fine, but I was thinking, like, uh, uh, instead of a spaceship, maybe update it for a teleporter. Mm, you know, something like that. Something like yeah. That. Put I, some out of phase with. Yeah, exactly. It, it could work into the whole time dilation thing. I would have had it more of, like, a horror story where it's like it kind of like we're talking about where you're going through time yeah and so it's like it's starting the 50s and then like at the very end is when it kind of gets to present day and they're like oh my god we we finally did it you know i guess everything caught up and you see it's like like they're seeing like their loved ones but they can't interact with them Mm -hmm. and then and then it just like now they're just going further and then it just you know now they're just gone dust yeah exactly yeah That'd be, and even then, you that'd be a good thing to go for in the same thing, because then it would be a better. Be careful what you wish for, because the people would wish for. Oh, I just want to be in a certain time in a certain place. Right, you're there. That's but you can't interact with anybody. You can't like you want to be back in 1950s America. Sure, Mm -hmm. but you're not going to be with your family. Yeah, you you'll see them, but you won't be with you. Exactly, you're there. You're just there. Yeah, and then it ends up they're going ha 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I just want to point out that in the original short story, the ship had over 30 men fleeing a war, and only six survive. Uh, And the only thing they're looking for is a new place to start over. Mm. Um, And the reason they die... Uh, well, it's the same thing. Why? Why this? Ah, because that's just the way it is. Oh, well. And then the reason they end up on the ship, though, is because I kind of just skimmed, so I didn't really understand it 100%, but they basically, like, the captain's like, oh, uh, uh, there's an antidote on the ship. Come on, everybody just come. Just go. And they get there, and he's like, eh, we're all going to die now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then uh, also Wickwire, who's, I wrote it down somewhere else. The the. Graypool was his name, Mr. Graypool. Um, he was a straight up android. He was like, I started out human, but over years I had more implants and oh, modifications wow. and stuff like that. Yeah, he, like, he straight up spells it out. Yeah. I am an and uh, cyborg. Yeah, so let's go on. I really wanted a little long here, very long here. Uh, tropes and morals, like we said, be careful what you wish for. Slash bittersweet ending. Uh, it's it's not. It's not bittersweet. No. It's not. Be careful what you wish for. No. Uh, the next one is let's split up, gang. Which yeah, three men arrive in a place they've never seen before and immediately <laughs> go out alone. Like yep. it's yeah, stupid. 
uh, lost common knowledge, which is what a tractor is, <laughs> as if they didn't have <laughs> farms. Like, yeah. Uh, Sci-fi writers have no sense of scale. There's 655 million mm -hmm. miles away from Earth, which is not somewhere deep in space. It's still within our own yeah. solar system and not even really halfway through it. Uh, the website doesn't list this as a trope, but I think this should be a trope, which is Old Man Funny Name. Yo, you just invented the name I of... Yeah. yeah, I I don't know. It Maybe there is one and it's named something else. Yeah. But that's what it should be fucking well, called. Well, I mean... Old it, Man it, Funny Name. Yeah, Rich Uncle Pennybags. <laughs> exactly, like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, in the short story, the caretaker of the cemetery asteroid is actually called uh, Mr. Graypool. And then also... Uh, the most rational crewman, who I presume would be the professor, mm. was actually called Mr. Fryden. Yeah, Mr. Fryden. F-R-I-D-E-N. Fryden. Uh, why would you make this? I couldn't find anything specific about why they made this, but Space Race just started. This is all part of culture that's happening right now. The, the realm of what could be out there is still fresh in a lot of people's minds, and the knowledge of what is out there is still very limited for your common man. Plus the uh, looming nuclear war. <laughs> that whole Yeah. That oh, whole right, thing. the whole war thing. Yeah, because that's why they, they throw the war part in yeah, there. Yeah. It's not really, yeah, it's not about war, but there is a war mentioned in there. And then um, also, yeah, the three explorers story is something that is 100% Rod's wheelhouse right now. And he's, Yo. I, I, I know I shouldn't say this considering this was a bad episode, but he is getting a little better each time he does tell the story. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Season two, he'll start hitting a stride. We got some ones coming up. Yeah. That uh, how many episodes are in this season? In this it's season, a lot. it's like twenty something. Oh yeah. my god! But you know what? As it's going, and I think pretty close, uh, are ones that are absolutely iconic. Yeah. Uh, this next one that's coming up oh, wow. is very is very famous, and the one after that yes. is extremely iconic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, that's what we said about um. Time enough at last. That one. That one was just... Ugh. Ugh. I fucking love it. Oh yeah, and you're wrong. Love it. Yo, how, like, that, 100%. They were like, get Jerry Lewis. And they were like, no, we can't get Jerry Lewis. <laughs> well, then get somebody else to play Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't even matter if he looks like him. Just get him. I don't care. So we go to the next episode. Let's see if I can guess this twist. I, I think I might have it this time. I think, I, I think I'm starting to understand... It's the way something right. I think I'm getting closer and closer each time I make a guess. So next week, uh, oh, this shocked the crap out of me. We actually got this in the end of in the episode. The, yeah. yes. Every other time, yeah. I, we have to go on a website somewhere and look no, it up. No, it was on we, Netflix. It yeah. actually was on Netflix, which, spoiler alert, it wasn't on the next one. Yeah. That was so weird to me. Fuck you. <laughs> Yo! But we actually get it, which... Yes, fuck you, because that is 100% what Sterling was doing when he did this, <laughs> which is he comes on and he says, next week I try to settle an argument to the effect that I'm not at my best when writing scripts for women. Miss Vera Miles takes my side in a most unusual and unique story we call Mirror Image. I hope to see next week you in your living room and Miss Vera Miles and the rest of us in the Twilight Zone. Eh. Yeah, like, ah. first off, this is him 100% going, yeah, I can't write for women? Fuck you, son, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> yeah. Look at these Emmys. Yo, and I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the twist is that he cannot write for women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, and then because Netflix, I'm sorry, it happened. Boom, here's the next episode. This is the synopsis. The, what's the first word that catches your eye? The big word with a bunch of letters in it. That's the key thing. Doppelganger. Okay, now I gotta uh, read the whole thing. Yeah. Because I already know what's happening. You gotta stop and, doing it. Dude, it doesn't matter. Because you know why? This description is also a description f from IMDb. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Because you, you gotta read thing. it after you see it. It's it. No. No. Because then how do I guess it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the plot that gives away the twist. Now guess the twist. Oh, well. So Netflix said that while waiting for a bus, Millicent Barnes has the strange feeling that her doppelganger is trying to take over her life. Mm -mm. So I guess that, based on that, that there really is a doppelganger. But she's a drooling beast who only grunts because Surly can't write for women. <laughs> also, the twist is... That the monster successfully repla replaces her because nobody pays attention to women. Yeah. 
It might be on something. <laughs> yeah. No, not, not too far yeah. off, huh? Yeah. All right, so hopefully that's it for my sake. <laughs> Let's go to... <laughs> Otherwise, we'll shoot you. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, you can buy some Time Brand glue next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do with a man after you shoot him. You make glue. Yeah. yeah. Or thing. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Shot my TV last week. Turned it into glue. <laughs> yeah, you can turn anything into glue if you heat <laughs> yeah, it up enough. Oh, yes. That happened to my car today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why you got stuck. No, it just uh, the little thing that I, I hold my uh, freaking thing in. Yeah, it got so hot that it slid down, and now there's like a big freaking like streak of burnt rubber. Oh. It's going to take a while to get it off. I was making a pun. Yeah, I don't listen to you. Because <laughs> your car turned to glue. That's why you got stuck. Oh, <laughs> cars. I get it now. The, Di- the Disney movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yep. All right, let's just go to plugs. <laughs> go ahead, whoever. Delta, you wait. Victory Pro Wrestling returns live to City Long Island. Yeah. For uh, <laughs> August 17th, uh, the Gold Rush Rumble. Things happen, over-the-top, battle royal type thing. Last four go into a four-thing guy, people place, and then uh, the winner gets a title shot at any title they want. And you should go. Buy tickets. Buy tickets. Buy. Now. Your money. Give us. Buy. Lots of money. Yes. Where can they buy those tickets? VictoryProWrestling.com, probably. (laughs) Maybe. August 17th is the new date. There was another one, and they changed it. Are there still paper tickets, or is it, like, digital? Like uh, every, yo, people fucking buy tickets online. I can't get online. movie tickets, yeah. I, and they get reserved seats. Yeah. And then they can not show up for those reserved seats. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> honestly, now people, like, buy reserved seats, and like, great, now I don't have to show up until the second or third match. And not worry about having the front row. Yeah. yeah what jerks. Yep. Huh. What smart jerks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll yeah, just, we'll just have to we'll have to screw them over. Start every show with a puppet hour. Yeah, and they have to come. Damn it, a solid hour, a solid hour of puppetry. <laughs> you know our hours only last five minutes. <laughs> just fucking read Great Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? What? That re- Yo, that reminds me. You you were uh, literally everybody was like super deep involved in their match last week. Mm. Like for some reason it was just like extra hard for people to come up with their matches last week. So for some reason, Bart was like, yeah, I'm fighting Andre in a lumberjack match. I'm not doing shit. Like, I don't care. Yeah. So he was just fucking around on his phone. And he was talking to me about shit. He was like, you know, you know what I want to do? I want to do this gimmick where I go out and I complain about stuff that everybody already complains about. But act like I'm the only one complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, he's like, I want to go out there and go, listen, I just want to tell everybody, we got to stop murder. That's not okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> like, yo, that, yo, 100%. Yo, it's that's like, yo, great. That is great. That's a good gimmick. <laughs> I know, I know people don't want to hear it, yeah. but folks, seriously. I don't understand why I'm the only one. Rape is no good. <laughs> don't, oh. like, just, just 100% just come out and say stuff. People already get, look, don't steal from nobody, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> yeah. How will it sell tickets? I don't know. Is it fun? I'll watch it. Is it fun for me? Yeah, I am going to love it. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, I I mean, obviously, follow me on uh, Twitter. You know, I'm chronically enfeebled on most social media thingies. That, that, and, uh, clarify, that's his name on most things. That's not the yeah. emotion. Well, it oh, is no, I'm emotion. absolutely chronically so enfeebled. Emotional. You know what? Forget I said anyway. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can find me uh, at Atomic Huge. And also, you can uh, help... Uh, you could help the United States women's national team for soccer by uh, going on Twitter and voicing your opinions on why they are by far and away the most impressive uh, American team that we've had in sports for the past decade, and yet their uh, their pay is literally been quadrupled by the men's team, who is made up of you know the three of us. And a fucking, and like a burnt lock. <laughs> I, I didn't even know I was playing that sport. Yeah, me neither, Exactly. But, <laughs> but we're making fucking millions. So yeah, do that shit. Cool, yeah. Uh, also go to www.ymp.com for all things Why Would You Make This, where you can listen to or download episodes for free. Uh, you can now also, as we already stated, leave a comment. Allegedly. Allegedly. 
how does that work? Is it on each individual page? Like, I click on an episode? Yeah. There's yeah. a comment. So well, yeah. they can comment on that episode on by that clicking episode. on that I episode. Think, I think. <laughs> Do you need to, like, make a profile? I don't know. No, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I really hope not. That was not part of the plan. If they, yeah. if you do, comment and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know. Yeah, he, he fucking threw this shit together an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's geocities.ymt. No, we got Oh, uh, the... excuse me, that's angelfire. <laughs> <laughs> dot... <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's 192.168.1. Oh, use the geo-fucking-holy-dress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so go there. Uh, intro music is Falling for Love by Kill Paris. Uh, next episode is... Did we say the name? We, we did that already. Mirror, oh, no. image. Mi- Mirror Image. Yeah, Mirror we did say it, but I just want yeah. to double tell It's called Mirror Image, so please watch that and then join us for it. And for you, J. Delta, I am Jimmy Time, and please remember that without mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.